Hello, my name is Tom Jensen. I am going to introduce to you some new techniques for constructing tissue microarrays. This is a different kind of TMA. This video will show you how to add a location marker to your own TMA. There are several 2mm sausage cores in this TMA. We were limited on the amount of tissue we could use, so we had to use a smaller core size needle to make these tissues work. This is actually a 3.5mm tissue microarray. The bone marrow on the bottom right corner was added to the slide after because we didn't want to use a bone marrow in this TMA block. That is actually a bone marrow sausage core. This sample was cut in half and embedded on end. This one too, a lot thinner but still an excellent sample. And this one was even thinner. So here you have it, the radical tissue microarray. In this video, we'll show you how to create the same type of tissue microarray. This H&E slide represents the 100th slide cut from this radical tissue microarray block. The 2 mm cores are present and the location marker is still visible. Always punch the location marker first before you add any tissue to your tissue microarray just in case you crack the block. This is dyed lung tissue. Any tissue will work for this purpose. We are using the 1 mm and the 1.5 mm needle for the location marker. Punch the array block with the 1 mm needle. The outside diameter of this needle is slightly smaller than the core size of the 1.5 mm needle. Try to make the diameter a little bigger as I am doing here so the punch from the 1.5 mm needle will fit. Be very careful because this is where you could crack the block out. I keep my TMA blocks at room temperature or slightly warmer when I'm constructing them. Use the 1.5 millimeter needle to punch your location marker. As you can see the core is a little snug. Use the back side of a pair of forceps to push the core into the hole. That's a good block. Now I can start my TMA. As I mentioned before, I am constructing a 3.5 mm TMA. Some of the tissues selected for this TMA are either scant or biopsies or needles like this one. So the 3.5 mm needle is not an option here. We are going to construct a sausage using the 2 mm needle. In the past, technicians would do a double or triple punch to fill a needle. This type of technique creates sporadic tissue throughout the core. When that TMA is cut, these cores will pop out causing blank spots in the TMA. It's best to fill the needle, then pack it. This will create a solid core, also called a sausage core. To use this 2 mm sausage core in a 3.5 TMA, just re-embed the core into a new paraffin block, then punch the sausage block using the 3.5 mm needle and add it to your TMA. If you have tissues that have been almost depleted, or in other words, thin or very shallow, your next options would be to either scrape it out of the block and make a sausage, as I have just explained, or re-embed it perpendicular or on end. To embed the tissue on end, you will need to remove it from the block. You can either cut the selected sample out of the block or melt it down to retrieve it. Before I re-embed the samples, I need to make sure that they are basically the same size when I stand them on end.
Okay, let's do a quick recap. Remove the selected sample from the donor block. Cut it into usable sizes. Stand it on end. Re-embed them into a new block. Once the block is cooled and at room temperature, punch the block with the needle you are using for your TMA. In this case, it's the 3.5 millimeter needle. And then add the perpendicular embedded core to your TMA. When punching an array mold TMA with a 3, 3.5, or a 4 millimeter needle, the stylet can leave a dent in the tissue core as it is being extracted. So to protect the tissue, you will need to create a barrier between the tissue core and the stylet. The cardboard from a slide carrier will make an excellent barrier between the tissue and the stylet. You can recycle the cardboard punch. Just put it back in the needle and use it as a barrier as before. Now I am punching the perpendicular embedded tissue. This time the cardboard stayed in the needle. The best way to flatten your cores and make them even is to flip the block over and press it gently on a countertop. To fill the empty holes left in the TMA, use the same paraffin that was used to construct the TMA. I often create blank paraffin blocks to use as fillers for my TMAs. When you extract blank paraffin cores, you will find that the stylet will leave a dent in it. Pinch the dent together to make it round, then put that end in your TMA first. This makes it easier to insert the blank paraffin cores into your TMA. The TMA block shown here has had over 100 slides cut from it. As you can see, all samples are still intact and probably another 100 slides can be cut from this block for antibody optimization, instrument testing, preparing tissue controls, or even research.